Hi guys, this is the Betamax man here. I've got a Sony SLHF750. Um, bought this off eBay. This one actually has a power supply issue. I was able to get it to load a tape, but that was about it. Um, it powers on. Shuts off. Powered on. Shuts off. And then it shuts off. So, it will actually play. Anyway, anyway, um, can't, uh, cannot get it to stay on. So, I'm going to pull the power supply out of this thing. And uh, we're going to take a look at it. Now, one of the things that I'm thinking could, it could be a capacitor issue. It could be um, a diode that's went bad, a zinger diode. Or it could be a voltage regulator. Because it does kind of act like a voltage regulator problem. Uh, where the, the, the voltage is being sent and then all of a sudden the voltage cuts out. Cuts out. Um, I'm, it, it very well could be a, just a voltage regulator. I do have a brand new voltage regulator I see. I have one left. Um, I had three of them and I fixed two machines. Um, I've got, this is the last, I'm down to my last voltage regulator, STK5441. Um, a lot of times with these ones, they'll have no power light. And if it's got no power light, um, then yeah, that's that's the voltage regulator. But this could also be a voltage regulator problem as well. Because the voltage is not being sent where it needs to. It's being sent and then it's like it loses the voltage. That could be a cap issue. So we'll pull... The I just wanted to show you on video what it does, and then uh, we'll see if we can't get this thing up and going. I think we'll be able to. I really think that uh, it's probably a cap that's went bad. So why don't we go and uh, I'll tear into it. Um, I'll start tearing into it. It's uh, it's about 4.46 a.m. in the morning, and it's starting at daylight, and I haven't went to bed yet, so maybe I should go to bed and then uh, wake up in the morning, because it is Saturday, so tomorrow, so maybe I should just wake up in the morning and, and, and work on it, uh, but for right now, I want to pull the power supply out. And I want to do some checks and see what's going on. See if we can dial in the problem with this thing. Alright, let's do some testing. I want to do a test on that Zinger diode. And see if that's... We'll do a 
ohms check on that. All right, let's just see. All right, let's test this the zinger diode. Basically, what that does is it's a it's just a on and off switch. Basically. Okay, it's it's good. Nothing wrong with that diode. Nothing wrong with the diode. Let's check the fuses. Okay, that one's good. That one is good. And that one is good. Okay, so our zinger diode is working. Our fuses are fine. Next step, capacitor. So what we'll do is we'll change caps and uh, after we change the capacitors I want to check for the capacitors. I do want to check them. Um, I'd like to get this, I need to get this power supply apart so that I can check the capacitors. So. Um, let's see how I get this thing off. I don't remember. I, I'm, I'm, uh, it's been a while since I worked on, on a, uh, 750, so. It's been a long time since I worked on the 711A chassis. So, there. Let's see here. There's a way for you to get the because this this chipboard will have, the circuit board will come off, but oh you know what? I think it has to to unscrew the transformer. Yeah, let's unscrew the transformer. And then, because uh, the transformer is connected to that circuit board. And we'll just... We'll just take this thing apart and uh, we'll just check some of these capacitors. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to check the caps. Now, if I replace caps and it's still having that issue, uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll change the regulator, the voltage regulator IC is going to be the next thing. There we go. And that comes right out like that. No, no biggie at all. So now I can get, I can actually get to some of the um, caps. And then there's another, another screw, because there's caps on this board, too. Um, but there's a lot of the, a lot of little caps on this board, so let's just check some of these capacitors here. We'll check them and see. Okay, so we've got uh, C1 and C2. C15. Yeah, we'll just start checking some of these. I just want to do a check. I'm not going to do the full repair tonight. What I'll do is go to bed here in a little bit and get up uh, tomorrow, mow the lawn. <laughs> and after I mow the lawn, then I can work on this thing again. So, oops. Alright, let's see, where's that cap? There it is. 
is this over here. Positive on that side. So let's check. Let's go check this capacitor here. These capacitors, capacitors, what they do is they hold, they hold a charge. So yeah, it could be a cap. Okay, that cap is not registering very well. So that one could be bad. That looks like a 16 at a thousand microfarad. All right, let's check this one. Just start checking them because they they fail, you know. Especially those Elna capacitors. That one's bad, and that one is starting to go bad. But we got a bad one right there. Yep, that one is definitely definitely bad. It says to replace it, so. That one is okay. Let's check C2. That one is bad, so we do have some bad ones. Yep, we've got some bad caps. Oh, C3, that is an Elna. What a surprise, guys. The Elna cap is bad. Now, how did we manage that? Oh yeah, because Elna's shit. So, let's do the C6. C6. That one is good. C... Let's do C1. Yeah, that one needs to be replaced too. So, it looks like there is a bunch of them, guys. There's a bunch that... And this one's good. And this one, I believe, is also a 16 at 1,000. Nope, that's a 63 volt at 100. I actually do have a few 63 volt at 100, so... That's good. This one's probably a 16 at 47. Okay. What I also want to check is I want to check these two because these two, there's two little ones right here. Let's just check these two. See if I can check the Rubicons without pulling the... Yeah, that one's bad for sure. So we can take... Actually, we can unplug, we can unscrew that, take that screw out, and that'll actually give me access, or it should give me access to that board as well. I'm gonna access that. Like I said, we're not gonna do this all night, but. I think I have to take, yeah, I'll have to pull this off as well in order to check those, unless I can get the meter on there, might be able to get the meter on there without taking that off for now, I just want to check them, but looks like these are 50 at 2.2 .2 is what these are, okay, let's just go Get the leads. Alright, that is bad. There's a bunch of them in here that are not very good, huh? That one's Actually, that one is completely open. So we have one that's completely open. And I'm sure that these uh, two are going to be responsible for that. So, what we can do, see there's the voltage regulators screwed in there. I want to get this off without... Oh yeah, okay, I can do that. Yeah, I can take, I can take these screws out. 
I could take these out and get to my... See, you gotta take the power supply all apart. But I just want to get it out so that we get everything pulled off. this piece off okay so I can now actually get access to those caps now so I can now access them I can change them out but we'll do that tomorrow uh, I'm just gonna I'm, I'm actually gonna go to bed I'm uh, Starting to get tired, and it's 5 a.m. I haven't went to bed yet. I work uh, swing shift. I'm a janitor for uh, Silverton School District, and uh, I work. Uh, right now, I'm working 2 to 10:30. So, and normally I work like 3 to 11:30. So, yeah, and if you guys work swing shift. You probably do what I do. You stay up for a few hours, and then you go to bed. I mean, it's nice to be able to just stay up for a few hours, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, okay, well, I'm going to leave this on here for tonight. And I'm going to I'm gonna see if replacing all those caps and see if that makes a difference. We may have to pull this regulator, I see. If you guys want to know what that is, I'll show you. So this is the voltage regulator, the STK5441. And this is also a regulator. This has actually got two voltage regulators. And this is a capacitor. That is one big capacitor. I guess I've seen a lot bigger though. And then we've got a lot of the, we got two uh, 16 volt at 1000 microfarad caps. But that is the regulator that does go out on these things. That t typically they go, they go out. So if you need to replace one, they're not too hard. But you will need a fine tip solder. It's you can see that the the solder connections are very close together, and so it's it's good to have um, it's good to have a fine tip with your soldering iron when you're when you're doing the voltage regulator. I see. I'm not going to put one in unless I have to. Um, because they are expensive. They're, it cost me $30 for that chip. And there, there are some other guys that are selling them cheaper than that. So maybe the next one I buy, I can get cheaper. Um, but I bought you know three four regulators from the seller so even though he's a little expensive on the regulators um, I still I still don't mind buying from him because he always treats me good and uh, he just he's a good good e-bearer so I buy from him so and it's gonna be the fourth fourth of July weekend so I got quite a few projects going on this weekend. So I'm going to try to upload video um, every day this week. 
this weekend, the whole weekend, I want to upload new videos. So, I'm going to be doing a lot of that. So, right now, though, I'm going to let this sit here, go to bed. I'll get up, mow the lawn, um, repair this thing. I would love to have this SOH0750 going. At least I know that mechanically the thing does work because it played for about two, three seconds. So, um, and th th this one is actually, um, I think I paid like, low. Well, I think I paid less, about $130 if I remember right, for the 750 and uh but anyway so and then uh yeah there's you know uh putting these in is not hard you just gotta have the right tools and if you're if you're putting a voltage regulator in for the first time you know i would just highly recommend one of the fine tips and don't add too much solder because if you put too much solder it's going to touch the other connections. So if you get your solder, you put too much solder in there, you need to take it back off because if the solder touches another pin, it'll actually short the chip and burn it up. So yeah, just make sure you're careful when you're replacing these regulators because they are and you can damage the traces pretty easily and if you do damage the tray oh see here see how these caps these these capacitors one capacitor was bad that capacitor goes to the voltage regulator so it probably is a capacitor that's causing the the thing to shut down so anyway We'll see you tomorrow. And for you YouTubers, um, the video is going to be instant. So we are going to uh, do that right about now. I've got the power supply back in. And we've recapped the whole board except for two big capacitors. The two big ones, they were fine. And actually, they tested uh, fully 100% working, so and I didn't have them, so I didn't worry. Um, I have all the little ones were changed. It was just the two big ones that were not. So I'm gonna plug it in, and uh, and then uh, we'll see uh, if we get. Uh, a constant power. Okay, so we seem to have repaired it. Let's hit play. Alright. Well, let's hook this thing up. Uh-oh, something's burning, though. Something's burning. I don't know what it is, but... I think I know what's going on. I put a piece of electrical tape on the circuit board, and it, what might be happening is that the tape is getting hot, and it's starting to smoke. And that might be what's going on, because it does play the tape. So let's just see if we get, like, a video signal. And let's just see here. We do. We have a video signal. I think that tape was getting hot, and so that's what was going on. So let's track. Oh, this is not a very good tape. This tape is worn out. So. 
Yeah, this tape is actually kind of worn out. Um, there's the image. And we do have a, a display. That's right, I forgot that these 750s had a counter display. I forgot that they did. They had a counter display, but that was it. That was the only display that they had for these things. And it's not smoking, and I think what's going on with it is I think, like I said, I put this piece of tape there, and electrical tape, and I think the electrical tape got hot, and uh, it was kind of, kind of burning. But it's not smoking. Um, there was one capacitor that I didn't have, and it was a 63 volt at 47 microfarad. And what I did was I put a um, a 50 volt and a 16 volt together to make the uh, voltage that I needed for the cap. So. I'm not sure why it was smoking, but uh, it seems to be working now, so. And what else I could do is, uh, you know, do some test recordings too. Uh, maybe we'll do that in another video, but I think for this video, I think what we're going to do is clean the heads. That's a good picture, so we can stop. Hit play. And there we go. Let's see if we got forward search. We've got reverse search. Well, got something going on with the reverse search. That might be the pinch roller. Well, for some reason, the rewind is not working, but we'll figure that out later on. We'll probably see if we can figure that out. But what I'd like to do is get like a, a schematic of these. Um, a while back, I've seen a schematic on the 750, but the problem was it was so darned expensive, you know? So, it was like, I'm not going to pay somebody $100 for a service manual. When I think you can download them for less than 30 So, but if I had a, I would like to get a schematic for this um, SOH0750. This is actually a very nice machine these machines they were built like tanks um they were very very good machines and i'm very very happy with this machine very very excited and happy uh we did we got a repaired slhf 750 so it was the capacitors that were bad. We had, I think, oh, at least four or five caps. There, nah, maybe six or seven. I don't know. I threw them away. I should have saved them and counted them and seen how many capacitors were failed in this thing. But, you know, it really is kind of fun to be a hobbyist you know I'm not a tech I'm not a technician you know I'm not like a licensed technician okay but I do know how to repair these machines and I'm I would call myself a hobbyist that is what I would call myself so this tape's been playing now for about five minutes uh, this is a, a movie called uh, Jaws and uh, it was a very good film. I really like. I really like the film. Um, uh, this guy right here, this particular actor, 
he plays his part very well. And also the, the guy that plays the police officer. Um, another uh, really good actor. But I, I can't think of their names. But this is a recording of Jaws. It's, uh, it's a crappy scotch cassette. Let's just see if we can eject it now. Okay. And we'll go ahead and we'll put it back in. We'll hit play. It's working. It's working. It's working. You remember uh, in uh, Star Wars, the uh, Phantom Menace, and um, Anakin Skywalker, which is a child at that time. He's working on, on his pod racer and he says, It's working! It's working! Yeah, it was something like that. So, that was kind of cool. And I always remember that, you know. Um, but like I said, I think the, the smoke was uh, due to the uh, piece of uh, vinyl tape that uh, was getting hot. Uh, I probably shouldn't have used the tape. I probably should have just left it because what I had to do is tie two caps in. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you the tape here that I but there's a capacitor on one side and then the other side I tacked a second capacitor to give me the uh, voltage that I needed because I actually needed uh, 63 volts at 47 so what I ended up doing was I took I took a 50 volt at 10 microfarad and then I took a 16 at 47 and connected them together so that's gonna make it 57 microfarads and 66 volts so we're only going up on the voltage by 3 volts And I did put the cap of all the proper capacitors in. I think I did put like a 25 uh, at, at uh, 25 volt at 47. And it was supposed to be a uh, 16 at 47. And I, I put one in last night to see if I can get it going. And I did eventually go to bed, but it was around you know, 5.30 before I went to bed. But So I took the 25 out and put the proper 16 one in because today my capacitors came in. Yesterday, before the day before yesterday, I got my 50 volt at 1 microfarad caps in. And then I also ordered some 16 volt at 47 microfarad gaps and they came in and this thing is now working beautifully yeah I'm pretty happy about this machine it's pretty nice you know when you got when you know you can repair something you know it's it's pretty cool you know and we checked the diode and that was okay. We checked the fuses. They were fine. Um, and we checked the voltage. I did check the regulator and it was fine. However, the capacitors, a couple of the capacitors uh, actually ties in to the voltage regulator. So you were, we were powering it on but then we were losing the voltage we were losing voltage because the capacitor was bad and that's what was causing our voltage loss 
as you can see it works really good so let's just see if we can rewind it okay it does rewind Or just the reset. There we go. Yeah, it, it actually is not bad for a tape that's pretty worn out and pretty well almost shot. Uh, is is playing really well. Actually, this is playing this tape better than my 1000. It actually plays this tape better in the 750. Then it does the 1000. Now, go figure, how the hell do you figure that out, right? How do you figure that? And I tried it on both my 1000s. This tape would not play on both of my SLHF 1000s. You know? So that was kind of weird. Anyway. And then, I've got a Super VHS machine, which is a JVC that I'm working on, and it looked like a tape path alignment issue. Come to find out, I was working on it for two hours last night. That's the JVC right here, this is the back of it. Um, I was working on that son of a bitch for two hours. And you know what I figured out? I figured out that the heads were worn out. So it's got a bad set of heads. Um, but that's okay because I do have a parts deck. So we'll just pull the head off of it and change it out. So doing a head on a VHS machine is very easy. Doing a head on a beta machine, a little bit more complicated, a little bit more complex. Now, I can do a video on the replacement heads for a beta machine, and we'll probably do that sometime in the future. I'll show you guys how to change the heads on a Sony Betamax. Um, I haven't done the heads on a Sanyo. I have never done replacement heads on the Sanyo betas, but I have done one on the Sony's. And they're, they're a little difficult to do, I, I gotta be honest, because if you put those heads on backwards, you won't have any color. So, but... So I'm going to clean the video heads and uh, I'm going to put the cover back on and I'm going to call it good for now. We will do, uh, I do want to do a, a search. Let's put this as VTR2. I want to put the remote and see if it works. My head's just clogged. So, there is something going on with the reverse search. And... I'm not sure what that is. I don't know what's causing the rewind search to have an issue. And... It, well, it could be because I've got the two caps together, that could be causing the issue. So, I'm going to order the right cap. This is the, the old cap that came off. So, this, is a, this might be the reasoning for the reverse uh, search issue. As you can see here, it's a 63 volt at 47 microfarad. 
and this is actually getting 66 volts at 57 microfarad. You're supposed to stay the same with your microfarad, and I didn't, and that's probably what's causing the reverse search issue. I'm thinking that's probably what it is. So I'll order the proper capacitor and then uh, we will, at a later date, we'll fix that and then we'll, f we'll try to, because I'm sure this is probably the reasoning for the reverse search. It doesn't have a problem doing regular rewind. But when it's in picture search, it's not doing what it should. This could be the reason, or it could be something else. Could be something totally different. So, let's clean the heads. I'm going to put the top back on it. And uh, we're going to call this video done. Well, she's all put back together. We clean the heads and everything. And uh, I do have the this piece of uh, cardboard that actually um, actually is stuck by uh, double-sided tape. And it came off and so actually started to come off so I just decided to take the double sticky tape off because it wasn't uh, gluing anything it wasn't glued or nothing to the thing so um here is a movie it's called Renegades and uh, it's a beta tape of course for the beta machine it's a uh, period correct movie for uh, this machine. And uh, we have my mom's dog here. She likes to come and visit me sometimes. And, uh, yeah, but this is, uh, she's, her name is Lady. She was named out, even though it's not the same breed of dog, Lady and the Tramp. And that's the movie that, that's why she was given that name. Uh, Lady was her name. And even though it's not the same breed, you know, it, it was a really cool Disney movie, Lady and the Tramp, about, you know, dogs, basically. And I'm a cat person myself. But this dog has definitely uh, softened my heart uh, when it comes to dogs, I think. Because I do like dogs too, but I just prefer cats. But this dog is, you know, she's very loving. And uh, she's actually probably one of the best, best dogs my mom's had, actually. She thinks there's cat food or something. She knows my cat sits up here, so she wants to sit up here. Anyway, let's just go in, open it up, eject. I don't think this tape's been wound, so probably. Yeah. Yeah, this tape's kind of old too. Some some of the tapes are in good shape that I have, and some of them are not. Um, and this movie was in a lot that I bought. I bought a whole lot. Uh, it was like fifteen tapes or whatever, and this was in the lot. And because I have it, I'll keep it, you know. And uh, as you can see, they, they put a, a barcode sticker. 
um, that says beta on there. If you peel the sticker off, it'll say VHS. No licking. No lick. No, you don't get into that. Wants to get into hey, 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 hey. No, not my tapes. Stay out of my tapes. Thank you. Little puppy. Yeah, she's still a puppy. Um, she's not even a year old yet. She's about maybe six months, seven months old. But, uh, yeah, she likes to get into stuff, so I have to keep close eye on her because... Anyway, um, there's the movie that's playing, and, yeah, Foreign Search is working. Don't know why, oh, Reverse is now working. Huh, well, Reverse now works. Must have been the tape, so we don't have to worry about looking at the, uh, at the reverse search because uh, it's working. So we've got a reverse search that works now, so that's good. Might have been the tape, you know, it, it could have been the tape because, uh, but it has been warmed up, so it might do it when it's cold it may not work you know but then it warms up and then it does so that kind of tells me it's a capacitor issue so it's probably it might be a capstan capacitor issue i don't know um but i can unplug it and then plug it back in after I'll let it be unplugged for about an hour, maybe two, and then plug it back in and see if the reverse search still works. This particular machine had uh, frame by frame advance, and um, this thing had a lot of bells and whistles that uh, that the 1000 had. Uh, this one doesn't have a full on-screen display like Z1000 does, and it doesn't have the title editing inserting that that the 1000 has. But it does have the the Beta One uh, S recordability and playback. It has the um, frame by frame and and it does have all those features and see if we hit uh, pause here and that's a good pause but the, the TV uh, for some reason yeah the TV's rolling I didn't know that an anal uh, digital TV could roll. I thought only analog TVs could roll. That is interesting, huh? Yeah, let's see if we can... See, because it's got good pause. Like, there is a... It does have, like, uh, slow tracking. And then it has the regular tracking. Um... So it's got normal. Come on. Get out. Out. Get. Trying to make a video here, dog. You know how hard it is to make a video with you in here? She always makes it so you can't stay mad at her. Okay. So, you know, maybe if I do the uh, tracking, it will uh, fix it. But... 
no, not really. It's not doing anything, so. It's the TV. If I had my analog TV hooked up, you know, it would be fine, but hey, no, you can't get those. There's some plastic buttons that she's trying to get a hold of. Anyway, but uh, yeah, so... If you're having like... If the, if you've got it on pause... And uh, it's not... Uh, tracking good, you can move the slow tracking... And it will... Sorry, I move the dog. You can move the slow tracking and it will uh, track perfectly in pause. That's if it was on an analog tube. This digital TV is not that great for showing off analog equipment. And I'm sorry this video is so long, but I just kind of wanted to do... A review as well as a, you know, repair. Yeah, it's just, it does this on my 1000 too. When I have it in pause, it, the picture will roll. But, see, you can go forward. See, now it's straightening up. So now it's actually locked in. There we go. It's locked in. So, if we do the slow tracking... That should clear it up, but due to the digital TV... Um... It's... yeah. So, it needs to be displayed on an analog. Tube. But anyway, uh, there it is. It's kind of locked, locked in a little. There's the. There, see, that'll it'll kind of go away, won't we? Adjust the slow tracking. But if we wanted to go in reverse, we could hit, we can go reverse, we can go, um, one tenth, one fifth, uh, and then we can go times one, times two, and then scan. So we can go in forward as well, of course. Hit that button. We can go one. And there you go. But uh, yeah, with that 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 monitor is not not that great. So anyway, but that is it, guys. You know, and you have your 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 three record speeds. Um, we'll hit stop. So it's in beta 1 right now, but there is beta 2, beta 3, and beta 1S. Now, if you put it in beta 1, it will not record the original beta 1. It will only record the beta 1 super. So if you turn super beta off and hit record on beta 1, it still records in beta 1s. You cannot defeat it. But anyway, that's it, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, the video. 
and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.